In this video, we're going to demonstrate and discuss the infraclavicular approach to blocking the brachial plexus. Immediately below the clavicle in the costoclavicular space, the divisions of the brachial plexus regroup as three cords that travel posterior to the first portion of the axillary artery. The cords include the lateral cord, medial cord, and the posterior cord, which is seen with the axillary artery faded. The spatial orientation of the cords around the axillary artery changes as they travel distally from the costoclavicular space to the coracoid process. To visualize the cords in the costoclavicular angle, the ultrasound transducer is positioned perpendicular to the clavicle at the midclavicular position. Relevant musculature includes the pectoralis major, subclavius, intercostal muscles, and serratus anterior. Here, the medial, lateral, and posterior cords are located posterior to the first part of the axillary artery. This is the target for a costoclavicular brachial plexus block. As demonstrated in the image, the lateral cord may be in a distinct fascial compartment that is separate from the medial and posterior cords in their own fascial compartment. To visualize the cords by the coracoid process, the ultrasound transducer is oriented immediately medial to the coracoid process, caudal to the clavicle in the parasagittal plane. Here, the cords are named for their position around the second portion of the axillary artery with the arm in the anatomic position. For example, the medial cord is positioned medial to the axillary artery. This is the area in which the infraclavicular approach to the brachial plexus is most commonly performed. Relevant musculature includes the pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, subscapularis, and serratus anterior. As demonstrated in this image, the lateral cord may again be in a distinct fascial compartment that is separate from the fascial compartment that contains the medial and posterior cords. As the cords travel distally from the first to the second part of the axillary artery, from the costoclavicular space to coracoid process, the medial and posterior cords begin to rotate from their position posterior to the first portion of the axillary artery to their position relative to the second portion of the axillary artery for which they are named. The rotation of the medial and posterior cords is demonstrated here through cross-sectional anatomy. In this live demonstration on a patient, the ultrasound is oriented first in the costoclavicular space. The lateral, posterior, and medial cords are visualized. As the transducer transitions from the costoclavicular space to coracoid process, the posterior and medial cords are seen rotating to their final position. We'll now demonstrate the classic approach to blocking the brachial plexus in the infraclavicular space. Here, the ultrasound transducer is oriented in the parasagittal plane medial to the coracoid process. The axillary artery can be identified deep to the pectoralis major and minor muscles. The axillary vein is also seen as a hypoechoic structure that lies medially to the axillary artery. With the left side of the screen corresponding to the cephalad aspect, the cords can often be seen as round hyperechoic structures. Again, these are named for their usual position relative to the axillary artery, although there is a great deal of anatomical variation. The lateral cord is usually located at 9 to 11 o'clock relative to the artery and is most cephalad. The posterior cord is usually at 5 to 7 o'clock posterior to the artery and the medial cord is usually at three to five o'clock and is most caudad. As discussed earlier, the lateral cord may be in a distinct fascial compartment from the fascial compartment that contains the medial and posterior cords. 
In this demonstration, the needle is inserted first to approach the lateral cord. Approximately 5 to 10 cc of local anesthetic is injected here. The needle is then advanced inferior to the axillary artery, closer to the fascial compartment containing the medial and posterior cords. A subtle pop may be elicited as you enter the fascial compartment. Approximately 20 cc of local anesthetic is then injected here. The distinct medial and posterior cords are now seen more clearly. Additional injections around the lateral cord and medial and posterior cords are performed in this demonstration, but may not always be necessary.